This video provides the proof that Kalman filter estimates are MVLUE, meaning they are the minimum variance linear unbiased estimates. The proof is constructive and especially useful for students who want to be convinced that using the Kalman filter to filter unobserved states is indeed a good idea. So the return data generating process that we rely upon in this is the so-called local level model. Note, we could use any other linear model for that. But why make it more complicated than absolutely necessary? So in any case, the data generating process of the local level model reads as follows. The observed time t measurement is here called yt. It coincides with a noisy realization of the signal alpha t. So mathematically we can write that as the measurement equation is given by yt being the sum of alpha t, the signal, which is unobserved, plus the measurement error epsilon t. Now note here epsilon t is, is iid with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma square doesn't need to be Gaussian. I'm highlighting that. It's sufficient if the measurement error is simply a white noise process. Now the signal alpha t is the time t realization of the unobserved state variable. In the local level model it's assumed that it follows a random walk. You could also say it follows a unit root AR1 process Mathematically, that means that our state equation reads alpha t plus 1 equals alpha t plus eta t plus 1, where eta t plus 1 is a white noise shock with mean 0 and variance sigma square eta. Now that framework captures many interesting applications. If yt is an asset's excess return, Alpha T would stand for the ex ante expected risk premium of that asset. For YT being realized volatility of an asset, Alpha would be its ex ante expected volatility, and so on. I will now prove the following statement. The Kalman filter solution for the most likely value of the realized yet unobserved value of our state variable is MVLUE, meaning it's the most precise estimate among any other linear unbiased estimators. Now the proof works as follows. First we define what is a linear estimator. Second we derive the condition so that that linear estimator is unbiased. Third, we derive an additional condition so that that linear unbiased estimator has minimum variance. And voila, we will see that a respective estimator coincides with the Kalman filter estimate. Now interestingly, the proof does not require that the shocks are Gaussian. Now make sure you keep a mental note for that because this says that as long as the state space system is linear with IID shocks, the solution from the linear Kalman filter is MVLUE. That sounds like a song. Okay, now back to business here. So first, we define a linear FT estimator for alpha t to coincide with the following expression. Now that says that alpha upper bar t is an affine function in the measurement yt and that the constant beta and the slope coefficient gamma of that linear mapping are ft minus 1 measurable. As a little footnote, 
for the Kalman filter, we always work with conditional one step ahead forecasts. Therefore, it's, it suffices that these coefficients are ft minus 1 measurable if we want to look at an ft estimator for alpha t. Yeah, make sure you get that inside. Now, now we go to the second step. We want that the linear estimator alpha bar t is unbiased. Now this says that the following condition has to hold. Where capital Y t minus 1 collects all observed measurements of Y up to time t minus 1. So here's what we do. We plug in equation 1 into the last equation. Then we take the conditional expectation of each term as the last equation tells us to do so. And we set that resulting expression to zero. Now I want you to do that explicitly on your own. So pause the video and do the derivation. Now if you have done so, then you have derived that in order to have an unbiased linear estimator, the constant beta needs to be restricted as follows. Now that tells us already that the linear unbiased ft estimate for alpha t takes the following form. Now that last equation alone is really interesting to look at because it tells us already here that the MVLUEFT estimate for alpha t is a convex combination of measurement yt and of the MVLUEFT minus 1 estimate for alpha t. So let's continue with the third step. Now we want to find the slope coefficient gamma that makes the previous estimate to have the lowest variance. For that we have to find the variance for the spread of the estimate alpha bar t minus the true value alpha t. Now here note, the conditional variance of the spread between alpha bar t and alpha t, plugging in the previous restriction for a linear unbiased estimator, is simply the conditional variance of 1 minus gamma times the conditional expectation of alpha t conditional on yt minus 1 plus gamma times yt minus the true alpha t. So looking at the last equation, you might notice that the variance of the first term is zero because as of ft minus 1, that term is non-random. The variance of the second and third term will obey the classical variance-covariance expression. Now for that, we write the measurement yt as the sum of alpha t and epsilon t. So the variance expression simplifies to the following term. Now the last term, the covariance term, it coincides with minus 2 gamma times the conditional variance of alpha t conditional on yt minus 1. So now grouping terms we can rewrite the variance of the difference between any linear unbiased estimator and the true value for alpha as follows. The conditional variance of alpha bar t minus alpha t, where we condition on all the measurements up to t minus 1, is equal to gamma square minus 2 gamma plus 1 multiplied by the conditional variance of alpha t conditional on yt minus 1 
plus gamma square times sigma square. So now we want to find the single linear unbiased estimate that has the highest precision, meaning it has the smallest variance. Now in order to find that, we need to find the gamma that minimizes the last equation. So the respective first order condition reads as follows. Now solving for the optimal gamma gives us the following ratio. So looking at the last equation reveals already that the optimal value for gamma coincides with Kalman's optimal learning rate, also called the Kalman gain. Now that then already implies that the FTMVLUE estimate for the unobserved realization of alpha t is given by that following expression, where alpha bar t, our estimate, is 1 minus kt times the conditional expectation of alpha t as of yt minus 1 plus kt times the measurement in t, where k is between 0 and 1. Now that representation of the ft measurable mvlue is also of interest in its own right. Now it teaches us that the mvlue coincides with Kalman's op optimal learning rate times the most current measurement plus 1 minus Kalman's optimal learning rate times the ft minus 1 measurable mvlue. Now the intuition for that equation is really great. It says, under perfect learning, which happens when the sensor is working perfectly, the measurement yt coincides with the sent signal, alpha t. On the other hand, if the sensor is a total waste of time, meaning it's highly imprecise, then the most recent measurement is simply ignored and the old MVLUE equals the new one, which says that no learning takes place. Now one final thought, just in case you ask yourself whether the last formula is indeed the same than the one you have seen in the previous video on the Kalman filter for the second simplest finance example. And indeed, they are the same. That is because the last equation can be rewritten as follows. As the conditional expectation of alpha t plus kt times the difference between the measurement yt and the expectation of alpha t as of t minus 1. And that last term is what we called nu t in that just mentioned video. Hence the following relationship holds that 1 minus kt times the conditional expectation of alpha t plus kt times the measurement yt is just the same then the conditional expectation of alpha t, conditional on yt minus 1, plus kt times nu t. And that is simply the expectation of alpha t, conditional on yt. So all in one, we've just derived that the MVLUE estimate of the unobserved state realization simply coincides with the estimate that comes out of the Kalman filter.